begin your second lesson, which is the physical environment. So in this lesson, we will discuss several environmental factors that organisms face, as well as the strategies that they employ to meet the environmental challenges they undergo on a daily basis. You should already have an idea of what these challenges are, as well as the adaptations that organisms have from the discussion we had in the intro. So the first that we will discuss is temperature. So organisms have temperature ranges suited for their survival. These temperature ranges allow organisms to properly perform their metabolic functions. Take note, however, that environmental temperatures do not need to match the body's temperature range exactly. The organism merely has to be able to maintain its optimal temperatures despite the outside environmental temperatures. Of course, this meeting in terms of the body heating up or cooling down, this applies mostly for warm-blooded organisms. Okay? Cold-blooded organisms, on the other hand, use outside temperature for regulation. So we'll discuss this in more detail later on, but just some examples that... <clears throat> So just some examples of strategies that cold-blooded organisms employ. Uh, for example, crocodiles. Crocodiles normally sunbathe in order to raise their body temperatures because they can't do so themselves, unlike warm-blooded organisms. So many environments have temperature extremes. So what happens when there are temperature extremes? Well, Temperatures that are too hot or too cold are obviously harmful. So processes that occur when temperatures reach extremes can disrupt the metabolism, so metabol metabolic processes that organisms undergo. For example, when the environment is too hot, the molecular structure of bio biomolecules can become compromised. So an example can be seen in this picture. Okay? So in proteins, the process of denaturation occurs at high temperatures. What happens when the protein denatures? What happens is the protein structure changes. Okay, So uh, as can be seen in this photo, it's the folding structure of the protein that became compromised after denaturation. So as you've probably learned from your previous bio classes, the structure of a protein is very, very closely tied to its function. So if you denature a protein, then you're changing its structure and it most likely will not be able to function normally. And this is what happens in high temperatures. Okay? In low temperatures, on the other hand, freezing can occur. And this is, well, bad, of course, because freezing can cause crystallization to happen, which can damage cells. Another example of a structure or something that is affected by temperature is the activity of enzymes. So enzymes also function at a certain optimal range of temperatures. So I want you to look at this graph here. So this graph shows you, well, on the x-axis, it's a range of temperatures, and on the y-axis, it's enzyme activity. Okay. So as you can see in this graph, the higher the temperature goes, the higher that enzyme activity also goes. And it peaks at around 40 degrees Celsius. Okay? Anything above or below that sees a lower amount of enzyme activity here. Okay? So this means that most enzymes usually function at a certain optimal range. By the way, this is only for a specific theoretical enzyme. Okay? Note that different enzymes have different optimal ranges. ranges. This is just one example. All right? It's not always at 40 degrees that the peak is found. Sometimes you'll find it at higher levels, sometimes at lower levels. Okay? So what happens if you go too high or too low? Well, it's seen here. Enzyme activities drop significantly. So, as you already know, organisms have adaptations to suit the temperatures that are found in their habitats. Okay? 
I think I've given you plenty of examples in the intro naman to this lesson. So try to recall the adaptations I mentioned that are found in... What, what were the organisms I gave? I think camels, sharks, and polar bears, just to name a few. Okay? But I'll give you another example. So an excellent example of an adaptation is the thick hair that covers a woolly mammoth. So this thick hair makes the, that animal very suitable for cold environments. Okay? So aside from, ins uh, aside from the hair insulating heat, it also serves to warm air. How? So as air is trapped underneath the hair, so for example, this is the hair, this is the organism's skin. Sorry, I'm so bad at drawing. Okay, you have the hair here, and you have the skin here. Okay? So what happens is, when air is trapped underneath this hair, it just circulates here. Okay? The air circulates close to the body, and the air does not get out, because the hair is in the way. This then keeps the air warm, meaning that it has small pockets of air that's warm close to its body, which in turn keeps the animal itself warm. This adaptation isn't just found in woolly mammoths, okay? This is found in pretty much all mammals, as long as they have a covering of hair that covers their bodies. 